pulled his off the calendar, so you can go someplace else today, or you can stay. You don't have to leave. You're <laughs> you're perfectly willing to, to, to sit through the rest of it. Uh, some of the lines, you'll be first as soon as we get a quorum. Um, and if you're here for Mr. Chessborough or Ms. Evans' bill, uh, those two are going to be on consent. They each have two, <laughs> just so you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Evans is the consent one is 608, and Chessborough's consent is 486. So if you're here for those two, you're okay. Uh, <laughs> we're just trying to help folk out as we wait on the on, on the quorum. Here, I just saw him. Oh, he's, he's on the conference committee. Uh -oh. Mr. Chesbro here, can we begin as a sub? Well, he's got uh, five, seven. Seconds. Well, but we're going to go with we're going to go with Mr. Valines first, and we might we might well just start as a sub. I always always hate to do that, just in case it's contentious. Mr. Valines, it'll be your option if you want us to get started now, and we'll interrupt you and, and call a quorum or. Whatever you like, I'm fine to start. Okay, okay. Why, don't, why don't we do that? I'm just, I just hate to see people wasting their time and okay. sitting around. Sounds good. We'll, we'll start members with uh, AB 567. Well, good morning and thank you very much. Pop your button there, sir. We, that one, that one. You all, there you go. Am I good? It's all good. All right. Well, good morning, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman. Good to see you. Thanks for the time today. Thanks for letting me go first. Um, basically, AB 567, which has moved through the Assembly very well, is a transparency bill. It is trying to give the state auditor a better opportunity to allow, you know, not just state workers, but public citizens a chance to actually focus on waste, fraud, and abuse. We always talk about it, and we always say we're going to find it. I think the people that can best find it are not those of us in the room, but actually those that are employed in government. So this gives a clearinghouse for them to send the information to. It allows the state auditor to investigate and look at those. And this builds upon a, a Senator Spear bill from a couple years back at least that, that allows, you know, what it asks government to do and the agencies to do is if we do an audit, you should act within a year. If not, we'd like to know why not. We're moving that to the investigative side, not just regular audits as I call it. I know that's the wrong term, but that's what I call it. So in a nutshell, it's a pretty, it's a pretty simple bill, but it does add transparency. I think it's a, a good step, not the, you know, the biggest in the world, but a good step towards transparency and allows state workers and citizens to get involved in government, cl you know, creates that clearinghouse. The clearinghouse is being created under the auspices of the auditor, who's been very good to say, we're not creating any new staff. We're simply going to absorb that work and do it on our own, which I think is a great testament to the auditor and to her office. So that's the gist of the bill, sir. And I'd be happy to take any questions or have the state auditor uh, make a few comments. Since we've got a moment, Madam Auditor, welcome aboard. Thank you, Senator. Um, for the record, Elaine Hull, California State Auditor, with me is Stephen Russo. He's my Chief of Investigations. And as Assemblymember Valines indicated, much of this bill is just essentially strengthening some of the functions in our investigative division. Um, in the past, we hadn't made recommendations. We've, we've uh, been very interested in doing that. And in doing so, um, we would like it to align with our audit process. And, and uh, Assemblymember Valines is correct. Senator Spear, before she left or was termed out with the legislature, authored some legislation that now requires my office to report on an annual basis those recommendations that we've made in audits, and if this bill is, is passed and, and chaptered, um, would also include investigations where agencies have not taken full corrective action after a year. So we isolate those for the legislature and for the general public to know here are our recommendations that were made that really these agencies need to be paying particular attention to. So we think this bill actually strengthens oversight and accountability in California. Is there, I'm not aware of any opposition to... Nor are we. Okay, question, Senator Harmon? Yeah. Uh, for the auditor, I was wondering, have you uh, taken an official position on this bill, or is your office in support of this bill? We absolutely support this bill. Have you submitted a letter to the committee on uh, that? We haven't drafted a letter, but we're happy to do that. Not necessary. Thank you. Any other questions? We don't, we don't have any. We don't have a quorum. Um, 
Senator Lai, this. Um, Thank you um, for the promotion, the sir. Well, we can we can work on that. Um, as, as soon as we get a quorum, um, you know, without opposition, I think the the merit of the bill is there. We will move this out as soon as we establish a quorum. Sorry that we don't have one just yet. A couple of our members are in uh, different committees, sure. so. Would you like me to come back then towards the end of committee, or it'll just move on its own? And it, it, it'll move. No, you're no, you're good. As, okay. As, as we would say in my neighborhood, you're good to go. Our good problem go. is just we just got to round up enough bodies to make the make it official. Okay, great. Um, okay, thank you, um, Senator Chessborough. Thanks. Um, thank you for coming. Let's see here. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Okay, welcome up aboard. Again, I apologize that we're kind of in subcommittee. Um, That's uh, Member Senator Chess Burrow has AB 763 about horse racing and the Humboldt Fair. That's correct, and I'm also going to be presenting, uh, if you allow Mr. Chair, AB 1499 on behalf of Ms. Evans, Assemblywoman Evans, okay. who is otherwise occupied with conference committee business. Okay, not a problem. Thank you. Well, first of all, it's uh, nice to be back in this room. I've served eight years on this committee uh, and uh, enjoyed it very much, although I can't say I'd recognize the room. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it is, it is good to be back here, uh, Mr. Chairman and members. Uh, AB 763 would allow, will allow the uh, Humboldt County Fair to accept wagers on out-of-state thoroughbred races when the Humboldt County Fair schedule coincides with another race in the northern zone. Uh, the Humboldt County Fair is the only fair that is affected by simultaneous racing schedules. The fair was founded more than 114 years ago. Uh, horse racing has been an integral and essential part of the fair since its inception. Uh, the Humboldt County Fair has not been able to participate in out-of-state wagers and has lost out on revenue as a result. The recent amendment to the bill adds urgency to preserve jobs and ensure horse racing continues in one of the most uh, picturesque uh, racing venues. I know the Del Mar folks would challenge this, but I invite you all to come up and see for yourself. It is a truly unique uh, horse racing venue. The Hollywood Park ain't no slouch. Okay, well, Hollywood Park as well. But Ferndale, which is up in Humboldt County. But I ask you, uh, when you sit in the stands when there's no race going on, can you hear the ocean waves breaking uh, in Hollywood Park? You can hear the airplanes go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling it. It's a, I tell you, it's a beautiful place, and it's it's. Uh, uh, Mr. Titus could explain it in more detail, but it's a uh, uniquely uh, small racing venue as well. And I, and, I, and I would concede to you that the scenery leading into your park is probably more. In <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't mean to besmirch anybody else's uh, racing venue, except to say that we're very, very proud of Ferndale, and I invite you all to come up for the uh, come up to Ferndale to see the races. Uh, the bill is supported by the Humboldt County Fair Association, the Humboldt County Board of Supervisors, and the Del Mar Thoroughbred Club. There's no known opposition, uh, and I have with me uh, Stuart Titus uh, representing the fair. Uh, and by the way, the continued existence of the fair and all the programs for the youth and everything else depends on, on us uh, keeping the horse racing venue successful. So it's not just uh, horse racing that's at stake here. Thank you. Sir? Mr. Chairman, thank you. Stuart Titus, General Manager of the Humboldt County Fair. Uh, I want to thank uh, you and the committee for uh, taking action on this bill today. It's very, very important uh, to our association, and uh, thanks once again for, for your consideration. And uh, the invitation is open to all of you to come up and uh, enjoy the uh, peaceful confines of the Humboldt County Fair come this August. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Don Peterson on behalf of the Humboldt County Board of Supervisors in support of the bill, and we would ask for your I vote in order to keep the fair going. And when you come to the fair, you'll drive right by the Peterson Dairy Farm, which is right on the outskirts. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Louis Brown on behalf of the California Authority of Racing Fairs in support of the bill and ask for an I vote. Okay. See, when you come to Inglewood, we can let you drive by the forum where the Lakers used to play. <laughs> <laughs> um, we saw, you know, Magic and Kareem, and the guys won five titles in in that building. So well, I'm happy to tell you, I've been to the forum, Mr. Chairman. It, it, it's a great venue. It is. Okay. Mr. Chairman, yes. members of the committee, Anthony Gonzalez, representing Del Mar Thoroughbred Club, in support of the bill. I also went to the forum. Thank you. <laughs> We will do the same thing. As soon as we get two other members, we'll, we'll put it up. Uh, I'm proud to say, too, is that uh, members, this will also provide for some additional online days at Del Mar. Um, so that will be an added benefit that we're able to pick up. I don't, um, I'm not aware of any opposition or any reason uh, not to do this one. Why don't you go ahead and do Senator Evans' bill? And I saw Assemblyman Ng, I think, 
Okay, come and tell me. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to ask Louis Brown to stay up here with me because uh, the uh, uh, next bill is one that he has concern with Remember, as well. We're going to go to item number 7, AB uh, 1499. Uh, Assemblywoman Evans is in conference committee, so today you're going to play the role of Ms. Evans. Uh, Mr. Chair, members, AB 1499 reauthorizes a fare to deduct an additional 0.5% of the total amount handled in exotic paramutual wagering for any breed other than races solely for thoroughbreds in order to pay for workers' comp costs for trainers and owners. This bill is a cleanup of AB 2103 from last year, which extended the sunset from January 109 to January 1, 2014 for the law which established an internal workers' compensation insurance program. The bill limited the sunset extension to races involving thoroughbreds and did not include other breeds. Uh, AB 1499 ensures that a portion of those races continues to be included in the fund. The sunset date was added to this bill to be consistent with AB 2103. The bill cont contains an urgency clause since fair racing circuit begins in June. There is no opposition to this bill. Uh, I'd ask for your vote and, uh, and also would like to acknowledge that Louis Brown is here representing the sponsors to answer any questions you may have. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Louis Brown on behalf of the California Authority of Racing Fairs. Uh, this bill is essentially a cleanup last year. Two bills went through, one extending the sunset for thoroughbreds, the other extending the sunset for quarter horses. We uh, missed the chance to extend the sunset for all other breeds. And so this bill will extend that, uh, re replace that sta section of the law that allows for that workers' compensation benefit to uh, extend to all other breeds, the mules, the Appaloosas, and others that race primarily at the fairs. Um, we recruit a lot of horses from out of state. This will allow us to extend that benefit to them and have a successful fair racing season this summer. Uh, we ask for your I vote. As soon as we get a be right back into that one as well. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Thank members. you. And we will, and with a, without your objection, sir, we'll take both of these and vote them as soon as we get a quorum. Appreciate so it. We'll get it done. Okay, now if we get Mr. Padilla back, we're good to go. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chairman. Um, okay, well, why don't we, uh, why don't we start calling the, the, the roll now, uh, Madam Secretary? Right. Here. Right present. Harmon. Here. Harmon present. Benoit. Here. Benoit present. Calderon. Here. Calderon present. Denim. Yep. Denim present. Flores. Negretti McLeod. Here. Negretti McLeod present. Oropesa. Padilla. Wiggins. Wyland. Okay, we're okay, and we're going to get one more in, and we'll establish a quorum. Uh, how does it? No, we ain't got but six. We need one more. <laughs> That's right, Calder, but, Cal, but Calderon's okay. We got we're we're in the middle of a roll call, so we got Calderon in. We can if we just get another one to show up, we're good to go here. Everybody's quiet too. That's all. That just gives us the six. We counted him already. Oh. <laughs> Color and I. He's making a big count. Yeah, he got me twice. Okay, we have an open roll call. Open roll call. We're going to pull that up until we get. See, he was here. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. We have an open roll call. As soon as we get the two of them, we'll put these votes up. Uh, Someone, in you can grab a seat in that chair and make yourself comfortable. We'll get right to you in a second. Thank you, Senator. Um, we're kind of doing this in real time today, so we're well, Mr. Chairman. While the roll uh, call is being left open, uh, I would uh, just comment on the previous presentation from. Uh, 
Humboldt County and uh, Ferndale is a beautiful town. It's a uh, has many many restored Victorian homes uh, in the town, and it is really a, a, a gem in California. Anybody gets up Northern California, they ought to stop by and visit Ferndale. Beautiful place to be. Okay, that's a commercial for Ferndale. Anyone wishes to go, they can work it out. It does appear to be a nice town, although they don't have a Neiman Market store. That's always been one of my It is. It really is a job. <laughs> they do have a small airport, though. So, yeah, there you go. You know, you can drop in. I tell you, though, I mean, and we still got an open road, but yeah, when you, in fact, when you drop in at Arcata, they get crosswinds. I don't know if you've ever, yeah, that, oh, man, yeah, that's. It makes it more exciting. Well, it does. It really, it keep, keeps showing your toes. It's just something about a 20 knot yeah. crosswind when you're, you know, when you have all, yeah, you got all the, you got all the power pulled back and you're cruising in and that, that 20 knot headwind kicks in and it. Yeah. There, there you go. In fact, I, I landed there one time, and I almost landed sideways. Sometimes that's the way to do it. Oh, yeah. No, you, you kick in. You, I, 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 yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't have more right rudder to put in. Otherwise, I would have put that in, too. But yeah. um, it was old pilot talks. It was just into But you have to remember to get off of it once you put it on the ground. Because you, yeah, that's, that ground loop thing really is a pain. But in, you just. Okay, we've got folk coming. Mr. Ng, I'm, I apologize. I don't want you to get started because I'm actually in the middle of the roll call, and then some of these people will leave, and then I'll be back where I started. So that's just such a such a pain. So. Yeah, actually, I saw a guy do that one time. You know, he, he, he came, he was doing this. Cause, so he was in about like a third. I mean, you know, in retrospect, he probably wish he hadn't landed. He'd have just gone around. Yeah. But no, it was, it was a, he was a, a tricycle. But he, when he, he came in, and then when he put it down, he kind of like forgot that, you know, that the wheel was also. So he went like, Erp, and it just. And it, you know, and then it, it hit the wing. The, the right. Okay. Okay. Wiggins, Wiggins present. Okay, Wiggins present. We've got a quorum. Um, thank you, Senator Ng. I'm assuming me. I keep getting this bad. My my problem. Someone Ng, welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Member Senator Ng is presenting uh, AB 1494. Yes. Thank you. Good morning, Senator and members, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, this bill, 1494, cleans up current language in the state's open meeting laws. The Bagley Keene Open Meetings Act uh, will make sure uh, make sure that discussions and decisions by state boards and commissions are held in public view. This legislation closes a loophole by a case uh, that you may be familiar with, Wolf versus City of Fremont, which is an appellate court case uh, on the Bagley Keene Act. By prohibiting a majority of members of a state body from using a series of communications of any form through group or individual contact um, directly or through intermediaries to discuss, deliberate, or take action on any item that is before the state agency, board, or commission. This bill would make the Bagley Keene serial meetings prohibition identical to the Ralph Brown Open Meetings Act. This bill does not affect local government, such as city council, school boards, uh, water boards, or county supervisor boards at all. This bill is specifically limited to state agencies, boards, and commissions. Um, it has, uh, I have Tom Newton with the California Newspaper Publishers Association, our sponsor, to answer any questions. Uh, this bill has uh, no opposition and no known votes so far. I respectfully ask for I vote. Bill. bill been moved by Senator Benoit, but I'm going to hold for the witness here. Mr. Chairman and members, Tom Newton, California Newspaper Publishers Association. Uh, Assemblyman Ng uh, did a very good job of summing up this bill. Um, we got all the kinks out of it when uh, SB 1732 went through the process a few years ago, amending the Brown Act in an identical fashion. Um, and we worked with uh, several folks to get that one right, and we're urging you to vote aye today. Thank you. Okay. Senator Grady McLeod. Uh, uh, Assembly Member Ng, if, uh, if I were on a committee or a, or a board 
and let's say uh, Mr. Calderon was on the same board and I call him for personal reasons, could I continue to call him numerous times? It just has to be within the scope of whatever we're talking about as That's opposed to personal. Okay. Absolutely correct. And, and thank you, that was a very good question. The, the concern I have, and I, I, I think we vote for today, is sometimes I think these things get into too minute detail. So if, if I understand this correctly, let's say I'm on a board, I'm going to take Senator Grady's McLeod, and one of my assistants talks to another one of the people on the committee. And let's say it's a five-member committee, then let's say that that person talks to another member of the committee. I didn't know that the subsequent person was going to have the conversation, so technically I'm now in violation of the law that I didn't know that I was going to be in violation of because I had no idea the second person was going to talk to the third person. And I, I may have asked someone on my staff to check with someone in the second one, but the, the third conversation would violate the law. Would that be correct? Uh, uh, Chairman Wright, I, I believe that would be incorrect. Um, okay. Help me. My understanding of the law, and, and I think this is settled, is that the a majority of the members of the body through a series of communications have to intend to use those communications to, to uh, discuss, deliberate, or make a decision on a, on a public issue. Since you didn't know about the second communication, then you did not have the requisite intent to violate the law. And I think that that's the settled interpretation of the law, uh, that that conduct would not be a so serial violation. And I apologize, not having read the entire statute, but intent is a part of yeah. this statute. Okay, okay. We've got a motion from Senator, but no, I'm sorry, Senator Harmon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have in my file a letter May 28th from the California School Boards Association. I don't know if you've seen that or not. In paragraph 2, it says the uh, new definition would apply to all state legislative bodies, including the legislature. And our committee analysis uh, indicates then at uh, page 3, in the last sentence in the first paragraph, the act excludes from that definition certain bodies of the judiciary and legislature. So I'm, I'm getting conflicting uh, information here, one from the committee and one from a, a letter, which, by the way, was a uh, support letter. Uh, my question is, does this apply to members of the legislature? Uh, the answer is no, it does not. Uh, the legislature is governed by its own open meeting law. Uh, the bagley Keene Act uh, exclusively governs the uh, state boards and commissions, multi-member bodies of, of the executive branch, essentially. It does not affect the state legislature at all. Thank you very much. Okay, we've got a motion from Senator Benoit. Call the roll, please. Section there. Right. Aye. Right. Aye. Harmon. Aye. Harmon. Aye. Benoit. Aye. Benoit. Aye. Calderon. Aye. Calderon. Aye. Denham. Aye. Denham. Aye. Flores. Negretti McLeod. Aye. Negretti McLeod. Aye. Oropesa. Padilla. Wiggins. Aye. Wiggins. Aye. Wyland. Ye. It has seven. That would move it out as soon as we will leave the roll open so we can have other members. So unlike you, we don't let our guys add on after we close the roll, so we'll, we'll leave it open for a little bit. But you've got seven. That's sufficient to move us on. Thank you, and we can learn a lot from the uh, upper body, I'm sure. <laughs> thank you very much, Senator. And we have bad members. habits, too. Don't take them all. <laughs> um, let me move. Uh, we had a discussion on... Uh, Senator Chesborough's AB 763 uh, for Humboldt County uh, has been moved by Senator Negretti McLeod. Um, call the roll, please. Right. Aye. Right. Aye. Harmon. Aye. Harmon. Aye. Benoit. Aye. Benoit. Aye. Calderon. Aye. Calderon. Aye. Denham. Aye. Denham. Aye. Flores. Negretti McLeod. Aye. Negretti McLeod. Aye. Oropesa. Padilla. Wiggins. Wyland. Yee. That was the bill that settled up Humboldt County Fair. That was right. That, that was. It has six. It has. It has six. We will um, leave the roll open on that one. Uh, open the roll on um, uh, Assemblywoman Evans, 1499. It's been moved by S Senator Harmon. Call the roll, please. Right. Aye. Right. Aye. Harmon. Aye. Harmon. Aye. Benoit. Aye. Benoit. Aye. Calderon. Aye. Calderon. Aye. Denham. Aye. Denham. Aye. Flores. Negretti McLeod, aye. Negretti McLeod, aye. Oropesa, Padilla, Wiggins, Wyland, Yee. Currently has six minutes. 
seven. Six, you need seven. We'll open the roll on AB 567, Assembly Member Valines, relative to government practices. Move the bill. Moved by Senator Harmon. Right. Aye. Right, aye. Harmon. Aye. Harmon, aye. Benoit. Aye. Benoit, aye. Calderon. Aye. Calderon, aye. Denham. Aye. Denham, aye. Flores. Negretti McLeod. Aye. Negretti McLeod, aye. Oropesa. Padilla. Wiggins. Wyland. Yee. We have six. We need one more. Uh, we'll open the roll now on the consent calendar. Uh, Mr. Chair, I had a question uh, yes, on the uh, consent uh, calendar. It's, uh, let's see, that's the... Uh, Chesboro and Evan. Yeah, this is the Chesboro bill. I'm, I'm going to uh, support the bill, but uh, our analysis uh, uh, has raised an interesting question about the, the definition of an emergency and how long can an emergency continue. And in this case, we have a bridge that has uh, become become uh, unusable that can last the repairs for many, many months and perhaps years. And I'm wondering if the committee should uh, look into uh, this situation of what is the definition of an emergency when you have a physical situation that's going to go on for years and years. As I understand it, then, this, this board has to meet every 30 days to renew the declaration of emergency. Is that is that a fair ass ass assessment? Somebody from the committee staff help me with that. That's correct. Yes. Well, wouldn't they need anyway within that 30 days? I, I don't know. You know, are they going to have to bring it up every 30 days for two years? That's what they have to do. Yes. I, if we had something that's a condition that we know is going to last for many, many, many months, if not years, seems to me it's an exercise in wasteful time and effort to every 30 days put it on the bill. Yeah, but the, the theory was that the group would meet uh, once a month and they would continue it. Uh, um, I thought we let Senator Jesper get away because he would have been the, the best person to answer the uh, question. I, as I say, I'm supportive. I'm going to vote for this. I'm just thinking it might be something okay. we might want to look at right, in well, the future as a committee. Why don't we open the roll on the consent calendar? All right, fine, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd move approval of the uh, two uh, bills uh, okay. on the uh, consent uh, calendar. That's AB 486 and AB 608. Call roll. Right. Aye. Right. Aye. Harmon. Aye. Harmon. Aye. Benoit. Aye. Benoit. Aye. Calderon. Aye. Calderon. Aye. Denham. Aye. Denham. Aye. Flores. Negretti. McLeod. Aye. Negretti. McLeod. Aye. Oropesa. Padilla. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Wiggins. Aye. Wiggins. Aye. Wyland. Ye. Aye. Ye. Aye. That has nine. That has nine. Uh, we'll still leave the roll open uh, for a bit. Why don't we go back to the items that are still open? Did we vote for everything already? We, yeah, we, uh, you're, you're good. I'm good. Okay. So item two, AB 567, currently has six votes. Absent members Flores, Oropesa, Padilla, aye. Padilla I. Wiggins, aye. Wiggins I. Wyland, Ye, Ye I. It's currently 9 to 0. Okay, move to the next one. Item 5, AB 763, currently has six votes. Absent members Flores, Oropesa, Padilla, aye. Padilla I. Wiggins, aye. Wiggins I. Wyland, Ye, Ye I. That currently has nine votes. Item 6, AB 1494, currently has seven votes. Absent members Flores, Oropesa, Padilla, aye. Padilla I. Wyland, Ye. Ye I. That has nine votes. And item seven, AB fourteen ninety nine, currently has six votes. Absent members Flores, Oropesa, Padilla, Aye. Padilla I. Wiggins, Aye. Wiggins I. Wyland, Ye. Aye. Ye I. That currently has nine votes. Okay. Um, Am I free to go on that? I think yeah, that that'll do it. I think that covers all the bills that we had. Um, Madam Secretary, we'll close the roll. Um, uh, Senator, um, Senator Chess, I'm sorry, Assemblyman Chesper, but it, it was Senator when I met you. Um, <laughs> if I, I'm going to ask Senator Harmon to just contact you, he raised a question about the 30-day period on the emergencies on your consent bill. I mean, he voted for it, so the bill is the bill is out. But if 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 if, if, if you guys could make contact and uh, raise the question he had specifically, it was, does the 30-day requirement require that body to continue to meet to extend the uh, the emergency period? And we didn't have a, a great answer, but we, we got 
the best answer that we had, and the, but the bill moves, so it's not conditional on the bill moving forward. But he raised that question, and you weren't here, so I wanted to give you the opportunity to make that clear with him. The magic of, uh, of technology, my staff told me, but I didn't give any time to try to answer him directly. Okay, th but the, but the bill passed out, so that you know, you, we, and, and the other one is out as well. Okay, we're adjourned. Yeah, let me close them real quick. Item number six, AB 1494, passes nine to zero. And item seven, AB 1499, Evans, passes nine to zero. Okay, we're adjourned.